Hey, good morning, everybody. Now, Nigeria's central bank has announced this week that from January, you'll no longer be able to withdraw more than $45 per day from cash machines from banks in Nigeria. That applies whether you're uh, a citizen of Nigeria or you're just visiting the country. And that's for the express purpose of coercing people into using digital currencies or digital forms of currencies and getting them to the digital economy. Um, than there were before. So $45 per day uh, in the UK, that's about £37 per day, which is a tiny amount that you're going to be able to uh, withdraw from cash machines. So it might be enough uh, for you to get you know, food for a couple of days or something like that, a little bit of stationery or you know, train fare or something like that in cash. But it, if you want to buy a car, for example, you won't be able to get enough money to do that. Um, so in the UK, we do have limits already in place uh, on cash machine withdrawals. It's quite hard to find out because the banks won't tell you. But if you go to a cash machine and do a little bit of trial and error, you, see, you know, if, if a few minutes, you can easily find out. So you can only withdraw in the UK uh, £450 per day uh, from a cash machine. Most banks have set the limits uh, at that level. And they won't give it to you in one go. They'll only give you 250 uh, in the first go and then you can go back and get another 200 pounds um, per day um, you know that's that's a small amount again not enough if you want to take your own money out and buy a car or something well you think it's your own money but actually the law's been changed in the UK so that your money in a bank is not your money you are just the depositor of the money. The bank actually owns your money, but obviously in their terms and conditions, um, they will give it back to you until they don't give it back to you. Um, at the moment that hasn't happened, but it might do at some point if they declare uh, a financial crisis or emergency. But that's a matter for a whole other video, I think. But back to Nigeria. Um, so Nigeria is... Uh, it's interesting they've tried it on Nigeria just after the G20 summit, which Nigeria went to, obviously being an important uh, country and an important economy. It is the most populous country in Africa by far, with 211 million people, and is actually the seventh most <coughs> populous country in the world, the third most populous country in the Commonwealth after India and Pakistan. So they're not trialing this out on a small country. They're trialing this out, the coercion to get more people into the digital economy, as they say. They're trying this out on a huge country with 211 million people. And because of the high birth rate, that increases by four or five million people every year. Um, so the thing is, with Nigeria and a lot of African countries, most people don't take part in the digital economy, as they say. They just use cash, and they're happy doing that. Everything's done in cash. It's very different to the UK and uh, some you know, Australia and so on, where actually in the UK and Australia, for example, there more transactions happen with credit cards and debit cards electronically than with cash. Nigeria and a lot of African countries are the other way around. So over 90% of transactions still take place in cash. So they want to try to get more people into using digital forms of currency um, before they bring in their, their ultimate plan of central bank the digital currencies and they have to, to be up for the World Economic Forum and um, people, New World Order people who want to do this, they're going to have to get everybody in the world onto a digital system using digital forms of currency first and then onto central bank digital currency. Well, it's not going to be possible at the moment in a place like Nigeria where 90% you know, plus of transactions happen in cash. So this is huge coercion uh, for people to have to get a smartphone 
or have to get a credit card or debit card in order to be able to spend money or to receive money um, in their paychecks, for example, because, you know, there is it's not against the law to pay people in cash uh, for the work and the labor they do. Um, governments don't like that because they want to now monitor every single transaction that goes on. And they've got the artificial intelligence systems to, to monitor that and look at that and look and search for patterns and so on. And um, then look to see what they think is uh, out of the ordinary or something and then investigate it and then perhaps tax people more. Or, you know, if they don't like what you're doing or what they think you're doing with your money, they might um, put a block on your bank account, freeze your bank account, for example and um, then stop you from being able to transact or trade in your own country and uh, basically ruin your life. This has happened um, to many people in the West, most notably uh, recently in Canada when there were the protests against lockdowns and the Canadian government froze the bank accounts of anybody who'd contributed or donated just $25 or $50 to the truckers who were fighting for freedom, which is absolutely appalling. They closed or froze people's bank accounts um, just for having a particular political opinion, which is tyrannical and draconian. Now, obviously, we know that the tyrants who want to create this new world order with a total digital system where there is no cash, and so everything has to be monitored. Everything can be monitored by the government and uh, frozen by the government. We know that these people, that's what they want to do. So they're trialing this out in Nigeria um, and from January. Uh, so I hope that the, the people of Nigeria will just rebel against this and say, well, we're not going to do it because they're going to watch and see. Uh, they try things out to see what works and what can get um, the people to change and nudge people's behavior towards 100% digital economy. Um, so they're trying this out. What will stop this from happening is if the people of Nigeria say, no, we're just going to carry on using cash and uh, we're not going to get more digital forms of um, currency and uh, we're not going to step towards um, with the central bank digital currency. We're not going to put their foot in the noose uh, of the trap that has been sprung there. But it's not just Nigeria. Things will be going on all around the world to trial these things out. You know, for example, the city of Bologna has already started a scheme, a social credit scheme, where you're rewarded for using um, a digital currency, a smartphone app um, that uh, links your purchases to your behavior on social media and what they consider to be good um, decisions in terms of the climate and in terms of your um, social conscience, whatever they talk about. So if you like certain um, <clears throat> woke things, you get uh, extra credit points and so on. These things are already being trialed. Every time they come up, we just have to say, I do not consent. I do not comply. No, thank you. I'm going to carry on using cash and I'm not going to let you monitor me and coerce me uh, anymore. Thank you very much, my government. Until we take over the government, which we will do. <laughs> so please come and join me in the Heritage Party for political resistance to this um, world, new world order plan to <clears throat> get people into a digital slave system and so we can carry on using cash because cash is freedom. Thanks everybody.